So first, I'd like to start with the goals of this presentation. Uh, the first goal we'd like to talk about is the history of the land parcels and attempts at a Bow Town Community Center. We'd like to discuss the current state of the Bow Community Center building, the need for a plan, and review of conceptual and preliminary options from the H.L. Turner Architects. Uh, remember that the town voted to pay $35,000 in 2023 uh, so that these architects could work with our committee and help come up with conceptual designs. The goal of our committee has been to communicate how we want to save and plan for the cost of this needed uh, project for the town. A Warren article is needed to move money into a capital reserve fund that exists. We will include answers to comments from our two community listening sessions, uh, input from uh, the fire chief via our Bow facilities manager, as well as input from the architects from H.L. Turner. Uh, we're happy to make this video uh, as we know that there are limitations to attending these community listening sessions. We're working on a website and we look forward to everyone being in touch with their comments and questions through this website. To start with the history, the current community center is, was built in 1950 when Bow had 1,500 residents. In 1992, the heirs of the estate of John Christensen were interested in selling the land where the current Sledding Hill and Gazebo sits that will in the future be communicated as Lot 68. In 1993, there was an article proposed and passed the purchase of Lot 68 for $100,000 specifically for civic use. In 1996, there was an annual meeting in which Article 7 passed to establish a capital reserve fund for developing a town center. In 1998, there were articles to request that this capital reserve be used for repairs only to the community building roof. Then we see transitioning in 2002 uh, at an annual meeting that there was a vote to transfer the remainder of the town center capital reserve fund to the general fund. Yeah, we believe that a lot of this happened due to the shifting to the needs of the public safety building. Uh, getting back to our community center building in 2007, there were proposed funds for a concept design of a new public safety building. The years between 2010 and 2016, there were multiple committees that came and went to address the Bow community building and town center. In 2016, there was actually a vote to demolish the building, given that the expense to maintain the building was too high. This obviously did not happen. In 2017, we opened, we celebrated the opening of our safety current safety center building and reestablished the Bow Community Building Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, I've made that bigger and more in bold as that's what we're hoping to uh, put money into uh, this current community building capital reserve fund. This is just a slide showing the many documents that our committee has reviewed, uh, appreciating the history uh, and appreciating the work that's been done in the past, much of which doesn't pertain uh, to the current uh, needs of the town, especially with the new safety building and the new park and rec building. So what is the current status of the community building? In 2018, the New Hampshire Fire Marshal placed the fire code compliance and life safety compliance of the community building back to the local level. Again, this very important statement is that by 2025, the current community building needs to have a plan in place and not just a vague plan, the plan needs to include a design, timeline, and associated cost. So with the work with H.L. Turner and the money that was uh, agreed upon by the town, uh, they helped us come up with three preliminary and conceptual options. Again, just to reiterate that these are conceptual options. The three that we thought made sense is number one, to address the life safety and disability non-compliance in the current building, an op concept number two, to renovate and enhance the current building. 
And concept number three, to utilize the land across the street, again termed Lot 68, for a new multi-generational community center. When we were thinking of what these concepts should be, we spent time thinking about what our goals for a community center should be. We worked uh, very closely with uh, Darcy, who runs our park and rec department, in coming up with uh, what we would love our community center to have. Multi-generational use, ample parking, welcoming gathering spaces, the ability to have simultaneous activities, Again, in 1959, there were only 1,500 residents in Bow. We now have upwards of 8,300 residents with the need for multiple things happening at once. We'd love to have efficient office space and ample storage. In the site visits, our uh, community center committee has done, we heard over and over how important ample storage is to the success of programs happening within a community center. We need updated safety standards, and we expect the building to be energy efficient. So concept number one is addressing the life safety and accessibility code in the current building. This gives our town 7,905 square feet with an inclusive anticipated cost of $3.76 million. Uh, this is a bird's eye view, simply seeing what already exists uh, with the de demolition of the fire department wing. Concept number one, pros to that, is that it is the least ex expensive option with the least tax burden on our townspeople. It's not wasteful of the existing structure and maximizes parking for voting or gathering. The listening sessions, as we'll get a little bit into later in the, uh, this presentation, requested additional options rather than demolishing uh, the old fire station. Uh, we're not going to go into those next slides yet, but we'll uh, address that a little bit. We wanted to make sure that the public knew we were listening uh, to uh, giving more options uh, eventually than this concept number one. The downside for this concept number one would be that it's not meeting our community center goals, not an investment for the future with continued, continued limited use for all ages. There's no full-size gym. Uh, still looking unsightly for the center of Bow and loss of the use of the building for approximately 12 months as the renovations are happening. To move on to concept number two, to renovate and enhance the current building would give the town 15,770 square feet with an inclusive anticipated cost of 6.55 million. Again, the bird's eye view, uh, you see the difference in this concept is the full size gym to the right of the existing building. And in the space where that demolished fire department wing was, there would be parking. To show the inside of what the concept would be, again, you see that the gym is on the right. And please take time to look at all the nuances uh, of the interior of the building, including the different program rooms and lobby. So pros of this concept would be the large gym, which would have room for spectators. It would fulfill the need for more basketball court time, more pickleball court time, a usable kitchen, multiple use areas, updated office space, a lobby, adequate bathrooms, and updated mechanical systems, and AC. Cons to this concept would be loss of use of the building for 12 to 18 months, limited storage in this concept, the loss of parking, limiting any restructuring of intersection, not aesthetically pleasing, uh, no improvement on our community outdoor gathering places, and not maximizing the opportunity to have multiple events simultaneously. Concept number three, to utilize the land across the street for a new multi-generational community center with 31,158 square feet with an inclusive anticipated cost of $13.41 million. The bird's eye view of this, again, envisioning this across the street where the current gazebo uh, and hill is. Uh, I'll give more slides to better visualize the two-story concept. So if you're driving down, uh, 
our Bow Town Center Road. Uh, this is what it would look like coming in from Concord to Bow, coming down the hill towards the intersection with Knox Road. As you would take a left onto Knox Road, you'd enter uh, this two-story building on the ground floor. This slide we thought was important from a conceptual part of understanding why it's a two-story building. This is from behind the building at the second story. This is the internal of the building. And again, I'd hope you'd have uh, take some time to look through uh, the intricacies of the inside of the building. This is the second story, uh, which is there because there would be a walking track above that full uh, basketball court with more program rooms. So with, a, with this building, hypothetically, uh, we would list that there's activities for all ages and investment for the future. It would be energy efficient and maximize the use of town-owned property. Uh, there'd be a lobby, again, fulfilling the need for basketball and pickleball. Uh, multiple programs can happen at once, uh, building a sense of community pride and a gathering space. Uh, the cons as far as the cost, we realize is quite high and there would need to be moving of our very uh, important and desired sledding hill for the town. Just to review the town bu budget process, uh, as people uh, desire to be engaged uh, and to know who we've presented this presentation over time to. CIP is a Capital Improvement Plan Committee. This is a group of volunteers, the select board who are elected and the budget committee who are elected. The process is the CIP committee reviews drafts submitted by department heads to the town manager and finance director and prioritizes the projects. The select board and budget committee then vote on warrant articles that get presented to the town at the annual meeting. Our community building committee has presented to the select board and capital improvement plan committee, as well as had the two listening sessions that I mentioned previously. And we've been happy to share this information and update this presentation each time. So how does our committee discuss how we would pay for this option? We're always driven by fiscal responsibility toward the needed changes of this important building. Again, our goal is to put significant funding into the Bow Community Building Capital Reserve Fund each year via a warrant article at the town meeting. There is the options for grants. Once we have a plan and the cost associated with that plan, we can apply for grants. There's fundraising efforts and in-kind services. So again, in response to questions from the listening session, that we had in November 2023 and a follow-up one in January of 2024, some of the questions dealt with what is the current usage of the building? And we appreciate Darcy's work in giving us this information. There were 113 events used by community groups or private rentals. There are five sessions throughout the year for recreational programs with a total of 1,329 participants engaging in those sessions. We learned that not many groups are turned away, uh, unfortunately, because there's groups that have needs that the building doesn't meet. For example, there's no kitchen. The cost is high at close to $300 per rental because it's such a big space to use for one group. The floor is not acceptable to basketball or volleyball so that uh, the Bow Athletic uh, club does not use it. It can't be used properly in the summer as there's no air conditioning and recurrent groups who want to use the space do not have access to storage. A question came up in a follow-up listening session about how we define the summer months as there's limited use without the uh, AC. Uh, summer is defined as June, July, and August as that's specifically when the AC is turned on by municipal buildings. Questions were asked about, could we use the Bow Town Library spaces uh, in conjunction uh, and take that into consideration uh, with these concept designs? But we learned that the Bow Town Library rental spaces are at capacity. Other questions we wanted to address from the listening session 
were what other towns have. Uh, so we compared similar towns as far as governance, population, tax rate, and property valuation. The town of Hampstead with 9,000 residents has two historic buildings. Uh, when we got in touch with them, they reported that these buildings have not been adequate for the needs of their town. Litchfield with a similar amount of uh, residents uh, also has um, a, a talent hall and, a, and has that as the only indoor recreational facility. Uh, they also reported that this building is not adequate for the needs of their town. Seabrook has a very large uh, building uh, with indoor and outdoor recreational facilities and a full court gym. That building's quite large because it's used for many uh, things for the town that our community center would not need. Other questions that came up is that would there be EV chargers? And we certainly hope so in time. Uh, the conceptual designs include roofs that are solar ready. Uh, a question was asked, could the building be used as disaster relief? Uh, it could be. A building for disaster relief requires restrooms, showers, a kitchen, and request for a support of a generator would be, need, would be needed. Uh, from the people that we spoke with, another disaster relief building is not needed at this time as we have access to the high school and library. The Bow Park and Rec building also now has a generator. So financial questions, which were uh, asked about a lot at our listening sessions and our committee spent a lot of time helping investigate. One question was, do we have access to state and federal funding? And we would once the town commits to a design plan and cost of the project. Uh, so that would need to be determined once we're deeper into a project. Question as far as would we use loans or bonds? We don't know that yet. But what we did want to do our best to educate the town on as far as a tax impact is uh, we appreciate the help from uh, Dwayne Ford to give us this actual information from the current bond for the elementary school edition. So again, this does not pertain to any concepts of our project we're discussing today, but just as a source of reference for actual information from the current bond at the community school. The municipal bond for the elementary school edition is 12.4 million over 20 years with an interest rate of 3.65%. So that at the first year, the interest only payment of 287,000 makes a tax impact of 22 cents per thousand dollars. In the second year, principal and interest would be 1.1 million with a tax impact of 84 cents per thousand. So that's some actual information, but there are many unknown variables to consider for our community building project, which is why it has been impossible for us to give a tax impact uh, for this project. The cost of the project, what is saved, what's gonna be donated, what grants could we get? All, these are all unknowns. What would the interest rate be at the time of the project? We don't know that. What's the town's evaluation at the time of the project? Also the important caveat of potential bond offsets. What are the impact fee? What could impact fees be? Sharing money from the revolving fund of the recreation department and acknowledging that there's the retirement of two bonds in 2026 and 2027. And so at this time, uh, I'd like to transition uh, education and information uh, to Chris Andrews who uh, is giving insight uh, as well as uh, for Dennis uh, Como. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, so again, my name is Chris Andrews, the town's facility manager. Um, there are a lot of questions from um, the community about what the life safety uh, plan was, what does it mean? Uh, back in the mid-teens, when the town started thinking about a new safety center, the town solicited uh, reports from outside agencies to help with uh, similar planning to what we're doing now. Outside agencies included the state fire marshal, uh, an uh, fire protection engineer, and uh, electrical engineer, as well as others. Uh, the input that we gathered from these several reports were then compiled by then Fire Chief Mitchell Harrington, who then developed a compliance plan to continue the use of the existing facility 
uh, presented that plan to the select board for review and acceptance, which the select board um, ultimately did. Uh, we also solicited ideas or a, a plan in a report from a um, ADA uh, consultant. Uh, between 2016 and 2019, uh, several of the, the smaller um, items were funded by the select board to continue the use of the building. And now the next milestone is 2025, which would include a uh, fire alarm system and other uh, upgrades to continue the use of the building as anticipated. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, the next slide focuses on questions that pertain more uh, to our architects from H.L. Turner. Uh, Dan Hall is here to help uh, guide us through these questions that came up through uh, our meetings and the listening sessions with the community. Thanks, Danielle. So my name is Dan Hall. I'm a project architect with the H.L. Turner Group and I've been working on the conceptual designs for the project. Um, the ADA and life safety compliance issues encompass both accessibility and uh, fire safety elements. So we've listed a few of them here. The state is currently not accessible. Um, there are hazardous materials throughout the building that would need to be contained um, and abated, which means the materials would need to be removed from the building. The, sec the current second floor um, old training room for the fire department, that is not accessible. And there are uh, egress code violations with that space. Um, the entire building will need to have an automatic fire sprinkler installed, um, as well as a fire alarm system will need to be upgraded from what it currently is. And then the kitchen, as Danielle mentioned previously, is not able to be used right now. So the um, equipment in there will need to be brought into compliance as far as exhaust hoods and, and contained fire suppression um, specific to certain appliances. Uh, the restrooms um, are lacking both in number and in accessibility in the building. Um, and then building signage, which has to do with room signs, exit signs. Um, this includes Braille for the visually challenged. Um, so building signs throughout the whole facility needs to be updated. Um, why in the plans is the old fire station demolished? This was a question pertaining to option number one. And the main drivers behind this was that the fire department wing has um, kind of served its useful life and the added cost of, of renovating that and trying to bring that back into compliance and making it usable to us to not outweigh um, trying to save it. And then the added space we could get on the site through parking capacity and site circulation, we felt was more valuable than replacing or renovating that fire station wing. So the next question is, this is Bill Hickey from the Turner Group. Uh, what is the estimate uh, for the cost to make use of the old fire station? So for option one or concept one that Dan had mentioned, it was about 3.76 million. Um, at this point, we haven't fully vetted this option with the committee. So we know it'll be more than 3.76. Uh, but at this point, we don't have an actual cost for that. But one can be developed as the plan uh, is further developed and we work with the committee on this option. Uh, the cost to demolish the existing building, this would be to remove the entire structure, including the foundation, and then just pretty much bring it to a gravel pad where the building footprint is now is about $400,000. And that would include removal of any hazardous materials in the building before the demo demolition occurs. And the last question is to make the existing site where the, where the building is now a green space. So that would include removal of, of all the pavement and then restoration of some loam uh, landscaping and, and grass and seed over the site. And the cost for that is about $350,000. Thanks, Bill and Dan, for that insight into the questions that were generated by the town. Uh, that slide is just one of the concepts uh, that gets to how we could utilize that fire station that was demolished. But again, that hasn't been discussed yet with the whole committee. 
So a website is coming. Chris Andrews is working on that. And we think a website will be a, a wonderful place for everyone to access all the documents, certainly this presentation for one, but secondly, all the documents referenced uh, in this talk, uh, as far as even historical documents uh, and future documents, as well as a place that we hope to hear about feedback. This is going to be the town's community building. And so, uh, yes, we want to save for it and we want to be proactive, but we also want to hear from the town as far as what we want this building to look like. And so we want a place where uh, people from the town uh, can give us that input. So uh, we're excited to share all of our hard work and, and all of this exciting uh, information that will uh, bring us to a community center uh, that our town wants and that our town needs. Thank you so much.